Recorded live from Rayma Bible Church in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, you are watching Kenneth E. Hagen's Winter Bible Seminar 1999. These hands were not meant to carry cares. Come into the throne room and lay your burdens there for. These hands were meant to praise the Lord. These hands were meant to praise the Lord. These hands were not meant to carry cares. Come into the throne room and lay your anyhow <laughs> I said sometimes you gotta just hallelujah anyhow Woo. oh bless the Lord hallelujah are you glad that you're born again tonight are you glad that you're filled with the Holy Ghost tonight are you glad that you're sanctified tonight are you glad that you're justified tonight Hallelujah. Are you glad that you are a part of the blood vault church redeemed, of the redeemed? Hallelujah. We're getting ready to sing blood vault church in case you don't know. And there's a part in the song that says, there is nothing that can stop this mighty moving force. Hey. Are you glad to be a part of something that the devil can't stop? <laughs> Hallelujah. He may try, but he can't do it. Glory to God. Woo! We're a part of the blood bond church. The redeemed glory to God. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They shall lift. 
lift up their voice, they shall sing for joy. They shall cry aloud and be free. They shall glorify the name of the Lord. It's the blood of the church, the redeemed. Oh, pick up your hearts, O Zion of the Lord. Let the earth spring forth with its praise. All the children rejoice from the islands of the sea. It's the blood of the church, the redeemed. And we are in that army of the Lord. We've been washed in the blood, and we are going forth. There is nothing that can stop but this fighting moving force with a shout of praise, a two-edged sword. Every stronghold of bondage must fall beneath our feet. Every prisoner held captive must be free. For our deliverance has come through the power of the sun. It's the blood of the church, the redeemed. Let the earth be silent, or winds cease to flow. Every creator be full. Church, the Redeemer, and we are in that army of the Lord. We've been washed in the blood, and we are going forth. There's nothing that can stop, and it's mighty moving forth with a shout of praise, a two-edged sword. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sing a little bit more. And 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God forevermore. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. Praise God. Thank you again, Father, for your goodness, for your mercy, for your blessing. Thank you for your presence the glory of God in this service tonight. Thank you for giving us utterance in the Holy Ghost. We'll give all praise, honor, and glory unto you for everything that's wrought in our midst. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise God. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'll tell you, if we just dismissed went home now, we could all say it's good to have been there. good to enjoy the presence of God. Amen. Amen. Now remember, tomorrow night is special healing. Healing rally, or put it another way, tomorrow night's divine healing night. Healed by the power of God. But you don't have to wait till tomorrow night. <laughs> the Lord's here, and He's the healer. Just reach up and take it now. You don't have to wait. You don't have to wait till some set time, but right on the other hand, it's good to have these times. Hallelujah. When people exercise their faith. Well, I have a text. And the reason I stay with the same one is I haven't been able to find a better one. First Corinthians, the second chapter and the fifth verse. <clears throat> that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. That your faith should stand in the power of God. To understand what he's saying is, you need to read the previous verse. To the church at Corinth, Paul talking about when he came to them, bringing them the gospel, for no one had ever been there before to preach. He said, my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration. Demonstration of what? Demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Because they had seen a demonstration of the power and a demonstration of the Spirit, it was easy for them to believe in the power of God. Some people believe in God, but they don't believe in the power of God. We said before, Paul writing to Timothy, talks about the last days, and he said there would be those that had a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. And so a lot of people have church, and they go through certain forms and rituals, and if we're not careful, full gospel people, charismatics are just as bad. They got a certain rut that they get in. They're in rutualism. <laughs> Amen. They got to go according to that. But we need to be free and open to the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Let Him lead us. 
Amen. Amen. Praise God. And we may have a well-prepared sermon, but we need to be so submissive and yield to the Spirit. He wants us to go a different direction. Just go a different direction. You know, I was preaching right here in the state of Oklahoma a number of years ago, back in the 50s, actually, 1952. To be exact, you want to know, so May of 1952. <laughs> Amen. And I got my sermon all ready. Paul, you know, said right to Timothy, who was a young minister, be instant. In season and out of season. I'm always ready, praise God. But then, you know, a lot of times I'd look my notes over and pray and, and uh, just see what maybe seemed fit me on the inside, feel good with, so I got my sermon all ready. And I would stay back in a back room and pray and just go out. I knew about time they'd turn the service to me each night. Go, see, I'm just there. I don't have any singers or any helpers. I have to depend on them. And... Uh, one reason I stayed back is sometimes they'd sing such slow and dead songs you'd think is at a funeral. <laughs> and I wanted to ask them sometime, this is a revival, not a funeral. A revival, you know, you ought to be a little more lively. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And, and then they'd go through a lot of palaver and a lot of talk and take up about an hour with most of it nonsense. And I didn't want to get in that. So I stayed back and prayed where I could come fresh from the presence of God. Amen. So I went in, come from a, you know, I know just about time they'll turn to the service to me each night. And I looked the crowd over and I saw these six distinguished looking gentlemen sitting right close to the front. There's three sections of seat, the section over to my right. And they were back, oh, four or five seats back and so I said to myself on the inside of me wonder who those fellows are because they looked outstanding very distinguished looking and on the inside of me the Holy Ghost spoke up thank God for the Holy Ghost <laughs> see I take this text because I can go any direction <laughs> because, because it talks about the power of God amen <laughs> hallelujah and so I said on the inside of me, wonder who those fellows are. And the Holy Ghost spoke up on the inside of me and said, they are so-called ministers from such and such a church. And then he said, I want you to change your message. Now, I had one, you know, it's a good one. That's the only kind I preach, you know, it's good ones. <laughs> I want you to change your message. And... Uh, so I changed my message. Now, these fellas, I learned later, were individuals that had attacked me on the radio. They had a radio program, and they attacked us, you know, for preaching, healing, claiming people got healed. They ran an ad in the newspaper and said, a $1,000 reward for you if you can prove that anybody has been healed in this so-called meeting going on. Well, I upped them on. I offered a $10,000 reward for anybody that could prove there wasn't anybody healed. Amen? And then they wrote us a letter and uh, telephoned us and wanted us challenges, challenged us to debate. And so I took off to preaching. Praise God. And I could quote, oh, probably two-thirds of the New Testament. So I never opened my Bible, never even, and I went on down the line. I said, now some people say that we speak where the Bible speaks and are silent where it's silent. I said, the only difference between them and us and me is they, do it, they say it and lie about it, and I actually do it. <laughs> I said, they said, now if you heal the sick, if you heal the sick like, Jesus did and the apostles did. Why don't you heal everybody like they did? I said, they didn't heal everybody. One of them jumped up to his feet. He was going to challenge me. Uh, one on either side of him pulled him back down. <laughs> and I said, can you read? 
If you can't read, get somebody close by to read it for you, but open your Bible to Mark the sixth chapter and the fifth verse. And let's read it. And it says, And he, Jesus, could there do no mighty work, save he laid his hands on a few sick folk and healed them. Now I said, Is a few everybody? Well, those fellows saw her. They, they looked at that, <laughs> looked at me. When the meeting was over, they came up friendly and shook hands with me. Said, you know, we didn't know that was in there. I said, you keep coming. You'll find out there's a lot in there you didn't know. You know what? They were honest at least. and said, They kept coming every night. Come up and shake hands with me and just smile. Said, boy, I'll tell you, we're learning. My God said, they, they, we're learning things we never did knew, know was in the New Testament. That's the reason God had me to change, you see, to help them. He's out to edify people, to help them. Praise God forevermore. Well, thank God for the Holy Ghost. Say it out loud, everybody. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. <clears throat> As a young Baptist boy pastor, I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, came over among Pentecostals. And I'll tell you, they've got so many ways you're bound to like some of them. <laughs> Amen. They'd all pray out loud at once. Run out loud, everybody. Made a lot of noise. I said to them, God's not hard of hearing. They said, no, and he's not nervous either. <laughs> Thank God he wasn't. And all kind of physical demonstrations. But I knew it was the Holy Ghost, even though I'd never seen it before. I mean, they'd get happy and dance. Sometimes a whole section of them, a whole section of seats, all of them dancing at once. And they'd sit down in this section here and jump up and start dancing. They'd sit down in this section over here. Then sometimes they'd all start singing in other tongues. Well, and that's thoroughly scriptural. You know, in 1 Corinthians 14 chapter. And the 14th verse, Paul said, for if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. So then he said in the 15th verse, what is it then? I'll pray with the spirit, that was with tongues, and I'll pray with the understanding also, and I'll sing with the spirit. Well, if praying with the spirit, according to the 14th and 15th verses, was tongue, then singing with the spirit would be in tongues. Hallelujah. Thank God. Well, thank God for all of the manifestations of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Thank God for the physical manifestations, like we said before. People falling under the power, or we call it sometimes being slain in the Spirit. You see that throughout the Bible, but particularly in the New Testament. Out there on the road to Damascus, Paul said we were all fallen to the earth. Amen. The Bible said, you know, when uh, the keepers, you know, after they'd, Jesus had died and they buried him, and so they said, well, his disciples said he's going to rise again. They'll steal his body away and claim that he rose from the dead. So they put soldiers out there to guard that tomb. Remember that? And the Bible tells us that an angel came. And the Word of God said that these keepers of the prison or of the tomb, they tremble and they fell. But what caused them to fall? They can come in, came in contact with a power from another world. Hallelujah, an angel. But thank God a greater one than the angel is here, the Holy Ghost. And when he's in manifestation, very often people fall under the power, dance in the Spirit, act like drunk people. Struck dumb sometimes, <laughs> can't speak. Amen. Hallelujah. And laughter. Praise God. When God turned again the captivity of Zion, then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue was singing, the Bible said. There's a real joy in laughing in the Spirit. And the Bible said the joy of the Lord is our strength. And the Bible said the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy. Joy. Joy in the Holy Ghost. 
And Peter said, it's joy unspeakable and full of glory. Amen. Now, it's safe to say that there is no joy without these expressions. Dancing, singing, hallelujah, laughter are expressions of joy. I mean, even in the natural realm. You can remember yourself in your own life as little children. Something good happened to you. Some particular gift, something that you want a long time. And you just couldn't keep, you couldn't keep from laughing. You couldn't keep from expressing it. I'm amazed sometimes at Christians sitting around looking so dead. No, the Bible said we're lively stones. No, not dead stones, lively stones. Built up a house, praise God, to worship God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Joy, joy. And it seemed to me that we didn't have the joy we should, and that's the reason God sent us a revival of joy. Hallelujah. And a revival of physical manifestations. But now then we're moving over into the spiritual manifestations. Spiritual demonstration. Demonstration of the Spirit in what we call spiritual gifts. Now again tonight, look real briefly to that 12th chapter of 1 Corinthians. You'll notice the 7th verse says, But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. The manifestation here, Paul calls these gifts manifestations. They're also called gifts. But you see, they're manifested through individuals as the Spirit wills. Amen. The gifts belong to the church. They're manifested through individuals as the Spirit wills. Now, the seventh verse again, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given, given to every man as the Spirit wills. For to one is given by the Spirit, the word of wisdom. To another, the word of knowledge. In other words, is given by the same Spirit. And to another, we reach down in the list and get a hold of discerning of spirits and bring it up here with these because these three are all akin. That is, they all bring revelation. Hallelujah. And then to another, faith or special faith. And then to another, working of miracles. It's divided to individuals as the Spirit wills, not as I will. Amen. Now, after he lists the nine, in the 11th verse he says, But all of these worketh, that one and self same Spirit, even, hallelujah, as he wills, not as I will, or not as you will, but as he wills. You see, it couldn't be put into our hands, and a lot of people try to operate these things in the flesh, and of course, nothing happens. Amen. Has to be under the anointing, because we'd get it all messed up. Now, for instance, one church particular that I pastored way back 1943, I attended a convention, and I heard Raymond T. Ritchie. Raymond T. Ritchie was a healing evangelist of the Pentecostal movement of yesterday. And uh, he said, divine healing is the dinner bell. Now, you know, if you're a country person, farmers, you understand that. Out in the country, the men folks may be back on the other side of the farm working. And they, farmers and country people eat dinner in the middle of the day. They have supper then at nighttime. City folks eat lunch in the middle of the day and dinner at nighttime. And so when the mom or whoever got dinner ready, they got a bell out on the back porch, like a, like a church bell. And they'd ring that bell. And they could hear that bell ringing way over the back side of the farm, and no dinner's ready. So they come to eat. Well, what he meant by divine healing is the dinner bell. You go to preaching and teaching healing and get people healing, healed, they're going to start coming. Yeah. Glory to God. And so... I decided that I'd have every Saturday night, I'd start ringing the bell. 
And so I just designated Saturday night. Now, we went on with our regular Sunday morning and regular Sunday night and regular Wednesday night service. But every Saturday night, I preached on healing. Every Saturday night. And prayed for the sick by the anointing of oil. I'd anoint them with oil. I didn't have any anointing to minister sick. And that's the reason I anointed them with oil. The oil's a type of the anointing. Well, I'll be honest with you. They didn't anything much happen. We were getting a few people healed all along anyway. But I'd say for six months, they didn't anything much happen. But you got to realize that the Word of God is seed. Jesus said the sower went forth to sow. Amen? You know the story. And he said the seed is the Word of God. Well, seed doesn't that you plant doesn't just come up instantly. Amen? We talk about, you know, in giving a lot of time, we're sowing seed, and that's true. And there's not going to be a return on that tomorrow necessarily. And But, but sowing seed is not only in the area of finances, but sowing seed is in the area of all of our lives. We sow seed by our actions. And wrong actions will bring forth a wrong harvest. Amen. That's the reason we're to walk in love one toward another and be kind one toward another and tender hearted as the Bible said one toward another and forgiving one another when we do that we're sowing seed and that seed's going to bring forth a crop but you see if you sow seeds of unkindness you sow seeds of hard heartedness you sow seeds of unforgiveness you're going to reap that too amen and so we emphasize and it's rightly that we should. We emphasize, you know, giving when it comes to finances, that we are sowing. But I'll tell you, we don't need to put that first. We need to put some of these other things first and, and sow these other seeds as well as that one. Are you listening to me? I said, are you listening to me? Amen. Amen. Because sometimes if that's all people hear, they think that's all there is to it. But you can sow all the money you want to sow. And if you don't sow these other seeds, you're going to reap a wrong kind of a crop over here. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Sowing seeds of kindness. Sowing seeds of love. Sowing seeds of tender heartedness, not hard hearted. Amen. Sowing seeds of forgiveness, not unforgiveness. Now, I like it like unto this. You remember in the fifth chapter of Ephesians, Paul talks about husbands and wives and uses in relation to husbands and wives, Christ and the church. And he said, teaches us that a husband is to cherish and nourish his wife even as Christ cheers us and nourishes the church, doesn't he? I said, doesn't he? Well, you see, a lot of times a husband thinks, you know, that if he provides financially for his wife and family, he's done his duty. No, he hadn't done his duty. Can you see what I'm talking about, the analogy? Some people think, just because I give now, but they're not sowing any other right seed. See, that wife wants more than just things. Yeah, you can work, you know, well, she knows I love her. I've had men to tell me. Never did. Did you ever tell her? No, she knows it. I'm always buying her something. You ain't sowing the right kind of seed. You ought to tell her you love her. Three or four times a day. And kiss her. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She wants love. She wants affection. And you can buy her all the presents in the world and go ahead and act a dummy and reap the wrong crop. Did you get the analogy? You can overly emphasize money and prosperity, and people think just because I gave money that I'm going to prosper in every area. But prosperity means that you prosper in every area, not just financially. And you can give, bless God, your last dollar. 
But you keep sowing seeds of unkindness. And you keep sowing seeds of hard-heartedness. And you keep sowing seeds of unforgiveness. And as the saying is, down in Texas, your chickens are going to come home to roost. <laughs> and the wrong kind of a harvest. And you're not going to be happy. Amen. Praise God. Why don't we put first things first? Are you listening to me? You still here? You gone home? Amen. Amen. To tell you the real truth about it, there's some things you can't overly emphasize. I said there's some things you can't overly emphasize. You can overly emphasize money. You can overly emphasize giving, but you can't overly emphasize kindness. Amen. Amen. And there's a lot of husbands not even kind to their wife. Well, I provide what one fellow told me because I was talking to him. The Lord wanted me to help him. I said, did you help him? No. He didn't have enough sense to listen. Well, you say, what happened to him? His wife left him. Thank God she finally woke up. <laughs> said, I've had enough of this. Well, she knows I love her. You ever tell her? No. When's the last time you told your wife you loved her? Five years ago. Yeah, but I bought her this, and I bought her that, and I bought her this, and I bought her that. Well, thank God for that. But that's not what she's looking for. She's looking for a lover. Don't shout me down now because I'm looking. I like to get up here close to people where I can look them in the eye. See whether it registers on them or not. If it don't register, I'll come over it again. Amen. So every day, thank God, thank God, we give you an opportunity to sow, and I believe this is a good ministry to sow your finances in. But I'll tell you the truth about the matter. We need to put first things first. And that man I'm telling you about, he didn't put first things first. He kept on buying presents, bought a new automobile, bought presents. No, I don't ever tell her. She knows I love her. I'm expressing love that way. No, you're not. It's safe to say there is no love without word or action. Amen. I said, Amen. Amen. I started pastoring when I was just a teenager. I just 18 years old, and I started pastoring. By the time I'm 19, I, I run into all kinds of problems. People wanted help. And here I am, just a teenager, trying to solve some problems of folks who had been married 20 and 25 years. But thank God, I had the Bible. And you know the Bible's one of the best marriage books there is. Hallelujah. And then not only did I have the Bible, but I had some sense. I had something up here. I think some folks don't have much up there. That man I was talking to, I tell you, that husband, he didn't have much up there. Yeah, she knows it. No, she don't know it unless you tell her. Well, I bought her this and I bought her that. What would you buy her? Amen. And then there's some folks that never bought them anything. You ever send her any flowers? Ever buy her any candy? How come me to get off on that? <laughs> well, there's a good analogy here anyway. You see, the emphasis always on giving material things. She ought to be satisfied. She ought to know that I love her because I bought her a new car. But never say I love you. Never show any affection. No affection whatsoever. You wouldn't need me if you'd see them out sometime, know that they were married people. Act like strangers almost. No. She's looking for something more than things. 
And I tell you right now, God's looking for something more than money. He wants something more out of you than, than money. He wants you to be blessed, all right. Hallelujah. Sowing seeds of kindness. That not only means kindness to your family and to your wife and to your children, but that means kindness to everybody. Sowing seeds of kindness. Tenderhearted. Forgiveness. No, oh, bless God, I'm not going to forgive them unless they do what I say do. Well, I'm glad we don't have to meet man's criteria. Hallelujah. God understands. Can you say amen? I don't know how come me to get off on that, but it did. I'll do my best to get back here as fast as I can. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Demonstration of the Spirit. All of these worketh, 11th verse of that 12th chapter, 1 Corinthians. All of these worketh that one and self same Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he wills. Not as I will, but as he wills. Well, thank God for the revelation gifts. Thank God for the vocal gifts, prophecy. Now notice, diverse kinds of tongues, interpretation of tongues. Amen. Thank God for the power gifts, special faith, working of miracles, gifts of healings. Well, healing is a renewal of the body from a disease condition. A miracle is in the creative order. There are many miracles of healing. Now, a healing anointing. I know the Lord appeared to me in 1950 and laid the finger of his right hand upon each one of my hand. Among other things that I've anointed you and give you a special anointing, minister to the sick. Well, I began to minister to the sick with that special anointing. Now, I'd always ministered. As a Baptist boy, I ministered to the sick by the laying on of hands and anointing of oil and got people healed. And as a Baptist pastor, I anointed folks with oil, laid hands on and got them healed. But now this is a special anointing, and it's scriptural too. Well, I was holding a meeting in one of the western states, and there's a lady in the healing line. I thought that she was holding a little baby in her arm. Actually, she had a just a regular size, not a queen or a king size pillar, but a regular size pillar in her arms, and this child was lying on that pillar. Well, when she got up to me, I thought it was, you know, saw, saw in the line that she's holding a baby because uh, the child wasn't any bigger than uh, just a, a, a baby. But when she got up to me, I saw that it had to be an older child. The body wasn't any bigger than a uh, uh, not, not a little bitty tiny baby, but a few, several months old baby. But the face looked older. And so I said to the mother, how old is this child? She said, between four and five years old. How he's live, the doctor said they don't know. Well, by looking at it, I, I thought, you know, because it never moved. She said, baby's never made any sound. The doctor said it could hear and how it's lived, they don't know. So she come for healing. Well, I laid hands on that child, but that healing anointing didn't go into it. Jesus in the vision said, when you feel that anointing go into people, you know they're healed. Now, as far as he's concerned, they're healed. If they don't hold on to it and add faith to it, it won't materialize. But it didn't go into that child. The anointing didn't go into that child. Well, I didn't have the heart to tell that mother, an only child. Uh, I didn't have the heart to tell her. That anointing didn't go into it. And, and so I, I wept all the way back to my hotel. Lord, why couldn't I minister to that little child? Why didn't that anointing go into that child? When I got to my hotel room, I fell on my knees by the bed and wept. And, and Lord, why, why, why? And then I fasted a couple of days. Lord, why? And the third day of my fast, the Lord said, that child was born with something missing in its head. Healing will not restore that. Healing is a renewal of the body from a disease. 
I told you I gave you a healing in order to go minister to the sick. The child isn't sick. The child was born with something missing from its head. It would take working of miracles. Now, working of miracles might be manifested through an individual as the Spirit wills, and it might be the regular ministry along with some. But he said, I didn't give you that ministry. However, he said, my word said, with God, all things are possible. Well, all things is all things, aren't they? And then the same Bible said, all things are possible to him that believeth. So get that mother to agree with you that what's missing in that child's head would be created there, would grow there. So the next night then when I went to the service, I said, is that mother here that brought that little child the other night? And the lady stood up towards the back of the auditorium. And I said, come down here, please. And, and I told my side of the story. And when I said the Lord said the child was born with something missing, he said, she said, that's exactly what the doctor said. Well, I'm glad the doctor, that the Lord knows as much as the doctors and even more. <laughs> praise God. And so I told her what he said. I said, now, that anointing didn't go into it because it's a healing anointing, and healing won't touch this case. But all things are possible to him that believeth, and with God all things are possible. And if two of you agree on us, so you agree with me. And we'll agree together that what's missing, that head will grow there, will be created there. And so we agreed to get, well, you say, did it happen? I don't know. I believe it did. But you see, I closed the meeting out two or three days later and left. And uh, so I don't know. I do know this, that I was preaching in California, and there was a man who was transferred from back up in Illinois, Indiana, somewhere in that area, to California by his company. And he was a manager. Uh, I, 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 I called him manager. In other words, this is a manufacturing plant, and he's a hated man. He's running the whole plant, several stories plant, you know, manufactured. He's a, he's a head man. Well, they came to my meeting. They were Lutherans, and they all got baptized the Holy Ghost, speak in other tongues. And he told me the reason that he came to this full gospel church was that their son, and their son, I laid hands on him, he's filled with the Holy Ghost, and, and, and the man and his wife is all baptized in the Holy Ghost, spoke in tongues. He said, my son couldn't learn. In fact, he never went to school a day in his life. He was just what we call from the natural slobbering idiot. And he said, I took him to Brother Branham's meeting. Brother Branham said, it's not healing. My ministry won't reach that. It's healing ministry. But he's born with something missing in his head. Disagree together. That's what that God will create that. And the boy was eight years old. Now, when I laid hands on him, he was 11 years old. Now, I'd never been to school a day in his life at eight. Couldn't learn. But in three years' time, he had caught up to all the grades. He's in the grade he ought to be at 11. Three years. Three years. <laughs> Whatever was missing was created. Well, you know, after all, God made man's body. He might have a few extra parts, <laughs> spare parts hanging around, you know. Praise God. I was, we had a meeting, you know, we had those all-faith crusades, and we were in Detroit. And a lady came up in the prayer line on Saturday night. Now, we were there from Sunday through Sunday. And so next day, Sunday, we closed out. And then we, well, actually, we closed out Saturday night because I flew home Sunday. I had to teach here in the school on Monday. And so uh, this lady came in the healing line. She had a tumor, 20, the doctor said a 28-pound tumor. She was 72 inches in her waist. Well, I laid hands on her, and the power of God went into her. And when she got up out of the floor, she is only 30-some-odd inches she lost almost 40 inches in a few seconds. Hallelujah. That was healing. That was healing. Now, we came on back home. Brother Roy Sprague was, or Craig was our crusade director at the time. So over in the office building, on Monday, I went into his office for some reason, and he's talking on the phone. And so he put his hand over the mouthpiece and said, I'm talking to the husband of that woman 
that was healed Saturday night that with, a, with a huge tumor, 72 inches in the waist. And so I waited, he got through, and he, then he said to me, he called to tell me that we went to the doctor. In fact, they had just come from the doctor's office. And of course, he substantiated the fact, I mean, you, you know, it's gone. You could tell that, of course. But then he examined it. See, she had been operated on, and her ovaries had been removed. And he said, I don't understand it, but they're back in there. That's working of miracles. Laying on of hands provides a way for God to manifest himself. Amen. Hallelujah. I wasn't conscious of that, but he divides to every man several as he wills. Hallelujah. But the doctor said, I, I want to keep track of this. I mean, they get astounded sometimes. <laughs> glory to God. Well, glory to God. Glory to God. I said, glory to, glory to God. Thank God. Now, notice here in this list, let's talk for just a little bit because the time's running out on us and tomorrow night's healing night. Let's talk a little bit about the vocal gifts and particularly about divers' kind. Now, notice divers' kinds of tongues. Now, I remember, of course, as a Baptist preacher, and I came around Pentecostals because they taught healing, and I believed in healing. But they also preached about being filled with the Spirit and speaking with tongues. Well, in my lack of knowledge of the Word, I found out, you know, in that 12th chapter of 1 Corinthians, in the beginning, he gives this list of these gifts. And then down at the bottom, he said, you know, towards the end of the chapter, 28th verse, for instance, he said, some in the church, first apostles, second daily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. And then he asked the question, are all apostles? No. Are all prophets? No. Are all teachers? No. Have all working of miracles? No. Have all the gifts of healing? No. Do all speak with tongues? So you see, I said, well, now you see, speaking with tongues isn't for everybody because he said, do all speak with tongues. But then one day it dawned on me, he's not talking about being filled with the Spirit. He just got through in the first part of that chapter talking about divers' tongues. You get filled with the Holy Ghost, you don't get divers' tongues, you just get one tongue. I've laid hands upon thousands from 1950 to 1958. I laid hands on 10,000 people and heard them speak with tongues. The Lord said, quit counting them, so I quit counting them. Amen. And I never don't know but one of them that not, out of 10,000, only one of them spoke with divers kinds. They just spoke with a tongue that the Holy Ghost gave them. Praise God. Amen. Everybody's not going to use. Divers kinds of tongues is ministry. You notice here, apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers, those He's not going to stop. He's not illogical enough to stop right in the middle of the verse and go talking about something else. It's talking about ministering tongues. Everybody is not going to do that. But everybody can be filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. And speak with other tongues. And continue to pray in other tongues. To build themselves up in faith. Howard Carter general chairman for 19 years of the Assemblies of God in Great Britain said, we must not forget that speaking with other tongues is not only an initial sign or evidence of the baptism of the Holy Ghost, but it, speaking with tongues, is a continual experience for the rest of one's life to assist in the worship of God. It is a flowing stream that should never dry up. And thank God that is the truth. Amen? Amen. Praise God. But you see, ministering with tongues and interpretation is, is a ministry. Now, we don't see as much as we should because we haven't been taught. Now, many folks, some of you Raymond graduates will remember that we, in, in their last days, brother and sister Goodwin ministered here at the school some. They would minister with tongues and interpretation because they had a minister along that line. They were pastors for the last, 
oh, about 20 some odd years of their life. Uh, before, well, actually, they quit pastoring and preached, but uh, they were in Pasadena, Texas, First Assembly of God Church. Uh, my wife and I held a meeting in Beaumont, Texas, in the 60s, I think 1960. And uh, there was in that church a lady we knew we had fellowship before. Her husband was a businessman. And I noticed he never, he didn't come to church. Now, I knew he had been saved, filled with the Spirit, came to church. She took us out to lunch one day and said, Now, I'm not talking against my husband, but I just wanted you all to pray for him because he quit going to church. He don't, I don't know, something happened and he got out of whack. And owned two different businesses, but he, he, he don't go anymore. And you get out of church, then you get cold and dead spiritual, and the devil takes advantage of you, and he's no doubt by what he was uh, into some things he shouldn't be into. And so we said, well, we'll pray for him. And so we closed that meeting in Beaumont and went over to Houston, Pasadena, as a suburb to Houston. And there in his own hometown, because he, he didn't come to one service, and he got two or three car lots. He owned, among other things, he had a used car lot. So he got three or four cars, a load of people, several car loads of people, and brought them over to Houston to the meeting. About 90 miles away, they'd drive over there every night. Well, one night the Lord said to me, minister to them. So I called them up to front. And a lot of times in ministering to folks, I'd have them to sing because everybody don't need to hear it. Oh, you're listening to me. And, and so, I saw then. I mean, right there in front of it, just like I saw, with, you know, I call it a mini vision, M-I-N-I vision. I saw them driving down the highway then, and she sort of had her head down, and he said, what's the matter, honey? She said, well, now I know Brother Hagin, all right, was anointed by the Spirit, but now a lot of that I told him. Because, see, the Lord was going to show them where their problem was and then give them the answer. I told them. See, she had told me a number of things. That's the reason always when I'd go to hold a meeting for a pastor, I'd tell him to begin with, don't tell me nothing. Don't tell me anything. Because then that hinders you from ministering if you know something. And so the Lord said, Brother and Sister Goodman don't know them. In fact, I believe we introduced them to him afterwards, didn't we? So they're strangers. So I said, Brother and Sister, the Lord said, have them to come. I said, you come and minister to these folks. Well, they came up there. She spoke with tongues, and he interpreted. She spoke with tongues, and he interpreted. And I stood there and thought, my God, they'll think I told them. <laughs> they'll think they're repeating exactly what she told me and then added to it. And so when it's all over, I said, introduce them to them. And I said, you can ask them. I, I haven't talked to them. I haven't told them anything. But the Holy Ghost told them exactly what their problems were and what they needed to do about it. There is a ministry here, folks. Are you listening to me? And we may be missing out on something. Glory to God. And there is a ministry of ministering to the church as a whole with the Holy Ghost and speaking with tongues with interpretation. Hallelujah. Which brings blessing and brings us up to a higher level and consciousness of His power and of His presence. Hallelujah. And then there is that ministry to an individual. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You wondered what happened to me. How come this to come upon me? I, I don't understand it. Know this that you don't need to understand. All you need to know is he has provided victory. And you're out of the darkness into the light. <laughs> and the enemy is put to flight. So rejoice and be glad, for the victory is won, and great, great rewards are before. 
Hallelujah. 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 Praise God forevermore. Demonstration of the Spirit. I'm demonstrating. Praise God forevermore. Now, I want my wife to get up and come over here because very often God will use us in this direction. Hallelujah. Praise God. Elisa, c- come here. We ought to get back there. Come up here. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Go ahead, Chuck. Mm. Ma shopitita, shatipo no motia yata. O bricky shilling, shali, shalamamoko ho ha ha ha. And you kapotio la bakashaya. Ni shakapaho, o pakishi, nandi, tashiho ocha, pika, lali de boko shanda. My little one, you have thought, is this what God wants us to do? And even become disturbed at times. And asked your husband, is this what God wants us to do? Maybe we ought to go somewhere else and do something else. But thus saith the Lord, be satisfied with where you are (laughs) and what you are doing. For there are great rewards for you. Great rewards. And the hand of the Lord is upon you for good, not evil. (laughs) Ha, 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 ha. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Stand up, everybody. Stand up, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God. Now say it out loud. Thank God for a demonstration of the Spirit. Demonstration of the Spirit in every area, in every category. There shall be a manifestation greater and greater in the revelation gifts. The Spirit of seeing and knowing shall into manifestation come in a greater measure than what we've seen heretofore. We've seen a sprinkling of these things. Occasionally. A little here and a little there. But now we're going to see more. And thank God for the vocal gifts. Every one of them. And thank God for the power gifts. Special faith. The working of miracles, the the gifts of healings healings. into manifestation, manifestation. into full bloom. bloom. I I heard the Spirit say full bloom. You know what that means? (laughs) Full manifestation. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Blessed be his holy name, both now, both now, and forevermore. Glory to his holy name. Glory to his holy name. (laughs) Ha, 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 ha. (laughs) Ha, 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 ha. Ha, 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 ha,
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Thank God. Thank God for the anointing. The yoke shall be destroyed. The yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. That's what the Bible said. The anointing. Glory to God, the anointing, the anointing, the anointing, the anointing, the anointing, the yoke, the yoke, the yoke shall be destroyed because, 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 because of the anointing, the yoke, the yoke shall be destroyed. <laughs> The yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. The yoke shall be destroyed. Shoot. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory. Glory. The yoke, the yoke shall be destroyed. That which is bound you, glory to God, shall be destroyed because of the anointing, the anointing, the anointing, the anointing. Glory to God. Devil's a liar. Yes. Quit listening to him. <laughs> Glory to God. The yoke. The yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise the anointing is a tangible substance, a heavenly materiality. It is transferable or transmittable from one to another. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Lord said to me when he told me to have these Holy Ghost meetings, you do what I tell you to do, the anointing on your life and ministry will be increased. And when that anointing is in full manifestation, now very seldom do we see a full manifestation. I'd say tonight we've got a 30% manifestation. But when it's in full manifestation, well, you won't even have to touch people. You get within three or four feet of them. That anointing will get on them, they'll start dancing, they'll fall, or they'll start laughing. Jerry <laughs> 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 ever notice that the anointing <clears throat> comes in waves? <laughs> it is getting stronger. <laughs> 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 Glory, hallelujah. <laughs> Getting stronger.
It's getting stronger. <laughs> you ready? Wrap this up if you can. <laughs> if you can. <laughs> Do it. 
Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your spirit. We thank you for your manifestations. We believe in them. We covet them. We desire them. Thank you that your anointing is in us. Your anointing is on us. Your glory is in us. Your glory is on us. Thank you, Lord, for things in our midst, things through us, things to us, things for us, things by us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Said the glory of the Lord fills this holy place. Glory of the Lord fills this holy place. Said the glory of the Lord fills this holy place. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You can be seated. Just glad in the Lord tonight. Thankful. Hallelujah. Father, we believe a greater, more copious manifestation of all these things. We expect them. Father, we thank you for your word tonight and for your spirit. And yet we know it's not your will that a one would leave the service tonight not right with you or not in good fellowship with you. And we just pray that every person, every man, every woman, every child, every young person that's never been born again, that you draw them and deal with them powerfully right now by your Spirit. Help them to realize their lost condition. Help them to realize that being a good moral person won't save you. Joining a church won't save you. Shaking a preacher's hand won't save you. You must be born again, Jesus said. Help them to realize that heaven is real and hell is real and life is short and the only way is Jesus Christ in the new birth. Draw them, I pray, in power as only you can right now. Father, I pray also for those that like the prodigal son of old, people that have genuinely known you. They have been born again, but they've gotten away from you. They're what we call backsliders. That means they're out of fellowship with you. They've been running with sinners and doing things that they got no business doing, just acting like they never were saved. They're miserable. They're empty on the, side, on the inside. They're, they're unhappy. Things are not going right in their life because they're not right with you. Help them, Lord, to find courage and faith and to rise up and come home right now, tonight. Not put it off, not procrastinate, but to come home. Remind them, Lord, they know how good you are, that you'll forgive them, you'll cleanse them. You'll wash away their sins and remove their condemnation and forgive them. It can be like they never got away if they just come home, but they must come home. Draw them powerfully, I pray in Jesus' name right now. With eyes closed, please, nobody looking around. Friend, if I was praying for you, and you know in your heart you've never given your life to Jesus, you've never committed to serve him, you've never received him as the Lord of your life, now is your time. Tonight's your night. While nobody's looking around, would you just slip up your hand, lift up your hand before the Lord, and say, Lord, I'm giving my heart to you tonight. I'm giving my life. I'm through messing around and playing around. I'm committing to you. I'm giving my life to you. I'm committing to you now. Lift up your hand. Thank you. Lift up your hand. Yes. Teenager. Yes. Teenager. Young person. Don't waste half your life. Yes. Move right now. Yes. If you're old enough to understand what I'm saying, you're old enough to, yes, to give your life to God. Yes. If you've run from the Lord and run from Him and run from Him, you're like that prodigal we were talking about. You'd say, Brother Keith, pray for me. I'm, I'm coming back home tonight. I'm through with all this messing around. The things of the world, sin does not satisfy. I'm coming back to my Jesus who loved me and already gave Himself for me. If you'd lift up your hand, you'd say, Brother Keith, pray for me. Include me in that prayer. I'm coming home. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm coming back home to Jesus, and I'm doing it right now. I'm not waiting another moment. Yes, God is dealing with me. I'm acknowledging it. I'm admitting it. Lord, I'm coming home. Lift up your hand if that's you. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. As I look one more time, you say, Brother Keith, include me in that prayer. Yes, thank you. 
Just thank you. Include me in that prayer. I'm giving my heart to the Lord tonight, or I'm coming back home to Jesus. I'm I'm through with sin. I'm putting it away. I'm coming home. Lift up your hand if that's you. If God's, yes, thank you. If God's dealing with you, please don't put him off. He's your creator. He gives you your next breath. Don't tell him no. Don't tell him to wait. But say, yes, Lord, and move. Respond. Lift up your hand. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. All right, I'm going to pray for you just like I said. But before I do one more thing. You might say, Brother Keith, I'm a Christian. I've made mistakes, but I've repented. But I'm not filled with the Spirit. I don't speak in tongues like I hear you all do. No matter what you may have heard, this experience belongs to every Christian. Every believer has a right to be filled, to overflowing, to have power to be a witness, and to speak with other tongues as he give utterance, a divine means of speaking and praying out mysteries, communing with God. You need this just as much as anybody else. If you say, yeah, Brother Keith, I believe that. I'm ready. I want to be filled tonight. I want to speak in tongues. You can be. We'll pray with you. You can be filled. You can leave this place in power. Lift up your hand if that's you. You say, I'm ready, Brother Keith. I want to be filled with the Spirit. I want to speak in tongues. Yes. Yes. Real simple. If you're a Christian, you don't speak in tongues, your hand ought to be up. Yes. I was a Christian for years who didn't speak in tongues. Now I've been a Christian for many more years who does speak with tongues. With is much better. With is better. Yes, lift up your hand. Yes, yes, yes. All right, okay. Glory to God. With heads bowed, please, eyes closed, nobody looking around. I'm going to pray, but before I do, let me remind you of something that Jesus said. While he walked the earth, he said, If you are ashamed of me and my words before this evil, adulterous generation, I'll be ashamed of you before my Father and his angels. But he said, If you will confess me before men, I will confess you before my Father and his angels. So it does make a difference whether you're willing to stand up in front of somebody else, to be unashamed of Jesus, and to confess him in front of somebody else. It does make a difference. We have to be willing to forget about being a closet Christian. You've got to be willing to stand up for Jesus and not care who knows or who sees. So if you lifted your hand to give your life to the Lord or to come back home to Jesus or to come be filled with the Spirit, I want you to be unashamed of Jesus, and I want you to stand up right now by your chair. Stand up. Stand up right now in the name of Jesus, unashamed of Jesus. I'm giving my life to the Lord, or I'm coming back home to Jesus, or I'm coming to be filled with the Spirit. Up on your feet right now up on your feet. I'm going to pray for you, but I want you to be bold, unashamed of Jesus. You confess him, and he'll confess you. Hallelujah. Those of you standing, I want you to open your eyes, look at me. Others need to be standing. Others need to be standing. You lifted your hand. Don't let the devil rob you now. Move right now. Tell the devil who's boss. He's not your Lord. You're, you're serving Jesus. Up on your feet if you lifted your hand. And I want you to open your eyes and look at me. Those of you standing, I want you to be bolder yet, unashamed of Jesus. I want to pray for you face to face right here in the front. I want you to find the aisle, step out, move here in authority, move in boldness, move unashamed of the Lord, coming to Him as we sing. Come to Jesus That's right, move now. Move from the balcony. Young person, teenager, come, come right now. to Jesus and receive. God loves you. We love you. That's right. Come. Don't even think about it. Just move. Move. When he deals with you, move. Oh, thank you, Lord. Come. We'll wait for you from the balcony. Come. Young person, come. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, we should wait. For whatever you may need, come quickly. Come quickly, we'll wait. 
Sing it again, Mark. Come. Come to Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. That's right. Just step right out. Be bold. God's dealing with you. Come. Come. And receive. I remember the day I walked down the aisle. I'm so glad I did. Yeah. That's right. Yes. Come. That's right. Come. That's right. Be bold. Be strong. Come to it. Oh, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. To give your life to Jesus, to come back home to Jesus, to get filled with the wonderful Holy Spirit. Come now. Yeah. Sing it again, Martin. Sing it again. Come if you're going to come. Move now while he deals with you. While he draws you, now's the time. Yes, hallelujah. Come to Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For whatever That's right. Come now. You may need Come now. You he loves you. We love you. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, That's right. Come. You may need oh, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Receive. That's right. Come on. Come on. Get right with God tonight. Yes. Get right with God tonight. Do it. Do it. Hallelujah. Get right with Him tonight. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, friends, we're so glad you came. So glad you didn't put the Lord off. So glad you didn't tell Him no. When He's dealing with you, that's the time to move. That's, that's the time to step out. I'm going to pray for you, like I said, and you will not be disappointed. God satisfies. He's faithful. Once you close your eyes, forget about everybody and everything except just you and him, just you and the Lord. You might lift up one hand at least toward heaven in reverence and respect to God. The Bible talks about lifting up hand, holy hands without wrath or doubting. Father, we pray for these like we said. They come not to me, not to any man or woman here, but they come to you, believing in you, believing that you're real and that you're good, and you are so real, so good. Lord, you said that those that come to you like this, those that you draw like this, you would in no wise, no way would you cast them out, no way would you refuse them or reject them. So we have your faithful word for it that you do receive and you do accept every one of them. They are accepted in the beloved. Thank you for loving them. Thank you for creating them. Thank you for sparing them and keeping them from their birth to now. They would have been destroyed many times over, but your angels have kept them. You saw they'd serve you. You saw they'd answer, and you've kept them. And you are the answer to every hunger and every cry in their heart. Lord, you said if we would confess with our mouth Jesus is Lord, and if we'd believe in our heart that you've raised Jesus from the dead, we'd be saved. You said if Christians, if they sinned and got away, if we would confess our sins, that you're faithful and just to forgive us of all our sins and to cleanse us from unrighteousness. We believe in the power of the blood and the regenerating power of the Spirit. We believe it. Friends, say this out loud with me. Even if you've said it before, reaffirm your faith, or if it's for the first time, say it boldly. Father God, I believe in you. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe he was born and lived and died on the cross and paid for all my sins, paid for my failures, and all my mistakes. I believe he's raised from the dead. He's alive right now. Jesus, you are my Lord. I receive you. You are my Savior. You are my Master. Thank you for cleansing me. Thank you for washing me. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for setting me free. Hallelujah. Put up both hands. Thank him for it. Thank him for his.